In this recording, we will take a div dive into Llama agents and uh, we'll see, um, we'll go into the code of Llama agent also and see how um, Llama agent uh, is enabling uh, multi agent processing. Right? So, when I first looked at Llama agent, I thought since it has a message queue, I thought that it is implementing the choreography pattern. But as I took a div dive into the code, I understood no, it is not a choreography pattern. It's still an orchestration pattern. And the worst thing is again, like the agents and the orchestration layer are all coupled together like through AI and uh, Autogen, uh, which to me is, uh, is an anti-pattern. The orchestration and the services actually needs to be decoupled. Uh, and choreographer, uh, pattern should look like this, right? Where I have a event, event hub in between and each agent should be able to create an event into the event hub. Also, it should be able to consume an event. It's like a pops up type of uh, pattern, right? And whichever agent is subscribing to whichever event topic, it should be able to consume messages from that event topic, process it, push the output of the process to the event uh, hub so that the next agent can uh, subscribe and uh, consume that event to do its processing, right? Each agent should be independent uh, of uh, one another. Um, one agent um, well, should be should be completely independent, right? So, I can, so that I can build and deploy and optimize this agent uh, individually, right? And uh, this is how uh, through the event hub, through the message, through the pub sub pattern, I should be able to choreograph a complex uh, business process, right? That is the choreography pattern. Llama agent did not implement this pattern. How Llama agent works is like an orchestrator, like I st still have an orchestrator, right? The orchestra, when a user asks a question and provides a prompt, the question comes into the orchestrator. The orchestrator is again a LLM enabled um, service, which it's kind of a router chain, right? If you have looked at uh, Lang chain, it's like a router router chain. So it orchestrator is deciding based on the user question, what type of message it is, right? And the type of the message it is publishing in the message queue as a message. Now the message queue, the, this service is in a loop, it is running, it is looking at each of the message type and message type and the agent services are mapped. So uh, based on the message type, the message queue is publishing the message to the uh, to the uh, to the particular agent service, right? Then the agent service is taking that message, processing it, and then completing the processing of that uh, particular uh, uh, question, right? And again, giving back to the message queue and the orchestrator through the orchestrator, it goes back to the user, right? So the message queue is running in a loop. All the agent services are running in a loop. Message queue, as and when the messages are queued, the message queue is going through the messages and see where it can route it, right? And the agent services are also uh, running in a loop. Uh, it is looking at its own task queue and what whenever a task arrives for that agent service, it will put, uh, complete that uh, uh, service, right? This is how it is um, uh, implemented. And as I was saying, the orchestrator, the agent services, right? The logic of the agent services, the orchestration logic, right? it's it's, coupled together in, in a single um, component. And, and that's what I feel like according, that's an anti-pattern, it should be decoupled, right? Now, if I look at the code, right? Let, let us go to the code right now. First we'll, so this is a code that I, I took it from um, the example. We'll go through the code and then look at deep dive into the code, right? So here, uh, this is where the message queue is defined, right? This is the message queue. Then, the control plane is instantiated with the message queue and the orchestration. So there are two types of orchestration that I've seen. One is agent orchestrator. Other one is a pipeline orchestrator. Pipeline orchestrator 
using pipeline orchestrator, you can do sequential processing, hierarchical uh, uh, processing of the agents, right? But we'll talk about it uh, later session, but in this, we'll talk about the agent orchestrator, right? So or agent orchestrator is nothing but this orchestration here. Right? And then uh, this is a dummy tool uh, that uh, has been created in the example, uh, converted to the tool representation. Then we create worker one um, with the tool, worker two without a tool, and then we create an agent from the worker, right? So my agent one is an instant, uh, uses worker one uh, to create the agent, agent two uses worker two. So agent one and agent two, each of them now I'm wrapping uh, into a service. In the agent service, I give the agent name, uh, the message queue where uh, it needs to um, publish and uh, receive messages, description of the agent, service name. This is very important. This is through this, um, it knows like what it is, uh, uh, task queue, even the message will be um, routing uh, prompts or questions based on this uh, service name, right? And this is uh, the host where this agent is uh, hosted and this is the port, right? Same way, the next agent is also defined and uh, you can also define a, a human consumer or a human service, uh, right? Um, so that you can bring human in the loop, right? Finally, server launcher is what is deploying the orchestrator, the message queue and the services, right? You mentioned what your agent services are, what is the control plane, what is the message queue and the additional human consumer. And when you do launcher.launch .launch servers, it will um, launch all of them. So let's take a look at it. I'll just uh, uh, stop and restart it. Let me restart it. So now we'll see that one by one, it will launch the orchestrator, it will uh, launch the control plane, the agent services and all. Right? So let's see, it has started bringing it. So the control plane has been launched at um, localhost 8000 port. 8001, I think, is the orchestrator service, right? And then for each of the agents, so the agents, we, one agent we said 8003, other agent 8004. Right? So this is uh, my um, secret fact agent, right? It's launched at 8003. And the dumb fact agent is at 8004, right? Now everything has been launched. Um, Llama agent uh, or Llama index also provided a utility so what I can say to monitor the control plane and through that I can test it out, uh, test out the various uh, questions. So when I say llama hyphen agents monitor dash dash control dash plane dash URL and then give the local host 8000. This is the control where the control plane is running. Right? It will bring a UI. In the UI, I can ask a question. So I can see both the agents now. So here I can ask it, what is a secret fact, right? Then once I give it, it, a message ID will be given, right? And the orchestrator route understands which to route. It puts it to the message queue. From the message queue, it publishes to the secret fact agent service to uh, process that message, right? So let's take a look at it, right? I put some print statements to understand the flow. Uh, this you don't have to understand. I already went through this. So let's see how it is working, right? First, let's go to the agent orchestrator code. Right? So this is the agent orchestrator. And this is the one that I think is running at the 8,000, right? So the question comes to the agent orchestrator. The agent orchestrator gets the next message, what message is coming, right? And then this is the logic here. Right. So, so uh, once it gets the message, this is where it uses a LLM to find out to answer this message or to answer this question, what tool should be used, right? It uh, gives me a response, right? So if you see the response, the response dot sources, right? That's a 
this is the one right response dot sources it has the uh tool right what tool right so, so what is the tool name right it's a secret fact agent right once i know what the tool name is the orchestrator down below for source in response dot sources right if there are multiple um tool right it can be multiple uh, tool names but here it's a only one tool name right so here if you see now it is publishing a message to the queue with the type name this name is nothing but the secret fact agent name right and the task id it creates a task id input string is nothing but the question itself what is secret fact right and action is that it's a new task right there are different type of task it can be a completed task it's a new task right now in the me so what happened uh, so far whatever we saw is a question is asked orchestrator did uh, found out what tool uh, can be used to do that right and it published a message to the message queue right published a message to the message queue now let me go back that's happened one right and now what is a simple message queue doing right it is running in a while loop so let me go to the while loop right uh yeah this is the processing loop right so for q in q uh, so it will publish to the consumer so whatever message it got it needs to publish to the consumer now to publish to the consumer it first need to know who who which consumer to publish right so i have um so in, in my uh, code i have uh, two agents right each of them is a consumer so self dot consumer uh, select consumer right select consumer so how it is selecting the consumer right if you see random dot choice list self dot consumer message type string dot keys right this message type string is nothing but this name here right so it is it, with with this index it is picking up the consumer id what was the consumer id the consumer id was when it was uh, re registered it right? everyone got a consumer id right but the actual consumer id is is picking up by the tool name now now after i get this consumer id right i am now doing a process so this is where i am uh, now calling that consumer and uh, publishing the message to that particular uh, consumer, which is that particular um, uh, agent, right? Now, the process message, now if I go to the agent uh, service now, where is the agent? Yeah. Agent. So in the process agent, now the agent is creating a section so types equal to new task. Agent is creating that agent is creating a task for itself now, right? This is the task it is creating, right? Uh, when you do a create task, right? So there is a there is an agent state. Each one of those an agent state. In that agent state, there is a task. There is a dict. Uh, dictionary of task and that uh, task goes into that dictionary so this is a task did so now a task has has come into the dictionary of the agent so now the agent if i go back to this agent service this also a, it is monitoring its uh, it is listing it is Continuously looking at the task, it is listing uh, what are the current tasks for me, right? It gets the current tasks, right? And for task ID in uh, current task IDs, if the task ID is in the completing completed task ID, it doesn't do anything because it is it is done. But otherwise, uh, if it is not, then um, it, it it will uh, execute that task, and the output. Uh, whatever the output it will finally uh, put it into the message queue it, it will publish with the output of the 
the computed task and all right and then whoever is the next uh, the in this case the uh, orchestrator if it is completed will take it and then and show it to the uh, user right that's how it is working so far uh, i still need to do little more deep dive to understand what this service metadata is i think this service metadata is nothing but the agent state so there is an uh, agent state so this is the i think agent state is in the base class base service class No, so the agent state is I did saw the agent state. Agent. I need to find out. I for the location. I think it is here. So the agent state is where it is. Um, storing all the state of the uh, agent. Base service agent runner. Yeah, I forgot where it saw it, but it is the service definition launch. Okay, maybe it is in the um controls main server let's see yeah it is uh, somewhere again I'll find this out in the next uh, uh, recording. I'll see, but I did see an agent state where actually each agent is uh, uh, storing the state of uh, its uh, task, uh, and the task dict, dict was also part of the uh, agent. So that's where I saw the. I think it is probably part of agent state, agent runner, probably. Yeah, so I'll, I'll find that out. This uh, agent state is, uh, a, the, it looks like a similar um, implementation of how we have the agents, uh, the state in uh, uh, runner in, uh, sorry, in, uh, yeah, this is the agent state. Yeah, you got it. So it's under agent runner. It's similar to how it is in um, Langraph. So this is every agent is maintaining this agent. This is a task, task dict. Right. Whenever a uh, task is published, it comes into the task dictionary of the agent, right? And the agent state. This is these are all the uh, functions through the agent is able to get the task, uh, find out what the completed tasks are, get the task queue, reset the task, and all right. Yeah. So this is part of the uh, agent runner uh, class, right? So that's what I found out so far on Llama Index. Um, in subsequent uh, recordings, I'll uh, share more. Thank you.